JJJ, you already know it's your boy Joe back out of the game, man. Codingface.com. Listen, your boy's back and I done did it again. Alright? Guys, today we're gonna talk about a topic that came up yesterday on the live podcast, right? It came up yesterday and it was about you know which one should I use? Should I use CSS grids? Should I use divs? and sections to basically lay out my whole website or should I do it through CSS grid right and of course you could use something else like bootstrap foundation or whatever framework is out there to build your whole page right now what I will say is it really doesn't matter what really matters is what's your target audience you know Sometimes we we see things on, online that are pretty cool. You know, like sometimes I see CSS grids. Sometimes I see people do some cool stuff with flex boxes. But the problem is, it depends on what company you work for. You know, because sometimes if you need to, uh, how you call this? Like, if if you need to be creating websites for people that use Internet Explorer, right? Or is an older audience that might still have like Windows 7 or Windows XP or something, right? If it's a, a audience that's a pretty old audience, then you're going to most likely have to use, you know, the old school way of, of building layouts, which is with the divs or sections or, you know, just setting up your widths. That's the old school way, right? Now, the most modern ways are flex boxes and CSS grids All right. but my advice to people is not to focus a lot on, on flex boxes in the sense of like you know like people be like oh I want to only build everything with flex box flex boxes are, are really good but for the right moment the right occasion right you can't use it for every every situation that's you know under the sun. You know, some people I've seen this done where people don't know how to build something with divs, or they don't even know how to calculate. You know, how much is five columns? They don't even know how to calculate that, right? They don't know how to calculate twenty times five. You know, so they they just say, oh, you know, I'm just gonna use flex boxes and I'm gonna build this. But what happens when you can't use flex boxes, right? My advice would be learn how to do it the old school way, which is really the way of knowing HTML and CSS. Make sure you master that. Then from there, jump to something like Flexbox. So whenever it's possible that you could use it, then you use it. You know, if you work for a company like Super, I don't know, not, I can't say Netflix because I don't think Netflix uses uh, flex boxes because their audience is so wide they don't use flex boxes. But let's say an example you're working for a digital agency that you know their target audience is you know people with brand new computers, you know the latest Chrome, the latest Safari, the la- the latest Firefox, right? If you were in that situation, then yeah, go ahead, use CSX grids, use flex boxes, use whatever you want, you know? But you always got to know who is your target audience, right? Because the worst part is when you build something and then somebody comes to you and be like, oh, but this shit doesn't work in IE, you know, IE fucking 8, IE 9, or IE 11. Now you have to go over there and actually you start redoing everything that you did before or start looking for fallbacks and a whole bunch of shit like that's like the worst feeling because it's like now you're doing double work you know what I mean so that's my advice to you guys just make sure you find out which one's the target audience and then choose one nobody's going to tell you oh this is the, the right or the wrong one because as long as it looks like the design that somebody you know gave you you're gonna be fine now if it doesn't look like the design then you have a problem there. so yeah man I'll see you guys later make sure you stay up all right kids
Bow.